Happy Taco Tuesday! Again, It's that tacos. time of the week again. <laughs> I feel like we always just end up back here. <laughs> I think I have tacos more than once a week though. You do? Mm-hmm. Tacos are great. I know. I love... I didn't know you have tacos. But uh, tacos, that form of food is sort of universal. Think about it. You take a protein, maybe a little bit of a lettuce fiber, mm -hmm. and wrap it in something. Yeah. So you got tacos. You got burritos, and then you've got the other like ethnicities. Right. You got like wontons. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, wonton gyoza. Gyoza. Um, uh, heroes. <laughs> heroes. Manapua. Uh -huh. Empanadas. So basically, it's just protein wrapped in. That's true. A flour-based or rice-based something. Sushi, you know. Yes. Yeah. Sandwiches. <laughs> Sandwich, exactly. <laughs> Everything. Right. Everything. And good morning. Welcome good to morning. Plastic Surgery 90210. My name is Ariel, and we're here with board certified plastic surgeon Dr. Katzen. Hi, Ariel. How are Hello. You? Good. Happy good. Taco Tuesday, everyone. Happy Taco Tuesday. Today, we're going to be talking about a very hot topic, I would say. Yep. And it's weight loss medications. Yep. With a focus on Ozempic and GLP 1s. Specifically, Ozempic. All right. Yeah. So, what is. Ozempic. Yeah, so Ozempic is a uh, medication that has been around for a while. Uh, it had been under another name, Wagovi, and uh, basically it does many things. And the primary objective is to lose weight. Mm -hmm. All right. And it was marketed uh, for mostly diabetics, and that's how it's come out. And it's so popular and it works so well, there are even shortages in some countries who have said, we can't dispense anymore because we've totally sold out. Even to the people who have diabetes. Even to the people that have diabetes. And that's very unfortunate. Exactly, uh -huh. so at least in the US, there have been some movements to restrict the dispensing of the medication to make sure that it is only delivered to patients with diabetes because it works so well. Mm -hmm. So with um, capitalism and supply and demand chains, if there's a high demand, uh, they will start to make more. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, there's a little bit of a shortage of it, but we can get it for you because before this wave, we have made deals with pharmacies where we can get it for you. Got it. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so semaglutide. What is semaglutide and how does it work? Yeah, so basically it's a fancy word. Uh, it's a glutide, which is a form of sugar, and it's a semiglutide, which means it's sort of like a glutide. Okay, hmm. like a semi truck, uh -huh. so semiglutide. Okay, very like good. Like Splenda? <laughs> Sort of like a sugar, correct, uh, but not a complete sugar. Okay. So what it does is it tricks the body into doing several things, okay? And it typically targets four things. The main, the main thing with weight gain, it's that we think it's due to glucose, sugar spikes in your body. And then not only those spikes, your body flooding it with insulin. So mm. it's those waves of you get glucose in your body, your body reacts and then floods it with insulin. So it's that scenario that leads to weight gain. Okay. okay, so what Ozempic does is it targets four different areas, okay? Number one, it targets the stomach, okay? So what, this, what Ozempic does, semiglutide, peptide one, is it slows gastric emptying. Mm -hmm. So in your stomach, it tells your stomach, go to sleep, so your stomach doesn't move, so you feel full. So you eat a burrito or a Taco Tuesday, and your taco just sits in your stomach and it doesn't move and you mm -hmm. feel full and you're like, oh man, that's not fair, I can't eat any more tacos and you've only eaten one. So one, it hits the stomach. Okay, so that's a very important function. Okay, number two, um, it hits the pancreas. Okay, so what it does for the pancreas is it stimulates the release of insulin. Okay, mm -hmm. remember insulin keeps the sugar down. So by stimulating insulin release, it can keep your glucose levels down. Okay. okay, again, it's that whole thing about those glucose spikes. Mm -hmm. Number three, it goes to the uh, liver, and the liver also releases a glucagon. Okay, glucagon also releases a product called glucose in your body. So if you can decrease the glucagon, it decreases the liver synthesizing glucose. Okay. So it decreases that chain, so it decreases glucose again. And my fourth area that is really, I find very fascinating, is Ozempic targets the brain. 
pretty cool. So we go, okay, so you got a weight loss medication targeting the brain, not just your intestines and your pancreas and your stomach, but also the brain. So uh, ozempic has been used for food addiction behavior. Uh, we're not quite sure how it targets the brain, but it targets a lot of cravings. Mm -hmm. So it decreases addiction behavior, not only for food, but for a lot of other things. Oh. Addictions like gambling, mm -hmm. like what are some other addictions? Alcohol, Alcohol addictions, drugs, drug addictions. Uh -huh. So it's it's maybe not as great as some of the other ones, but it's very interesting that it targets the brain too for addiction types of behaviors. That is really interesting. And one of the most common things that people say is that the food noise gets cut out in yeah. their head. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. So uh, people with food addictions, all they're thinking about is food all the time 24 7. I think food, I food, food. <laughs> no I didn't say that but she said that uh, but 24 7 thinking about food you uh -huh. know what you know even when you're eating you're thinking about oh gosh when am I gonna eat my next meal for, dinner. Or for <laughs> yeah. tomorrow and you know so that type of behavior so uh -huh. it as you said it quietens that food noise of that constant thinking about food so mm -hmm. it's a fascinating drug yeah. and very popular FDA approved it's very safe uh, you know in the US they try these drugs for years and a lot of clinical trials I think the Ozempic has been around for about 15 years one five wow. so now it's just hitting the press it's not like oh yeah we discovered it three months ago and now we're selling it no it's been studied for a long long time let's do some audience questions because yeah. people had sent in some questions okay how does the medication affect your metabolism okay so again it does it does three things uh, your metabolism it slows down the stomach so you're always feeling full your stomach feels full you're like ah my tummy's full I don't need to eat anymore okay two it targets your pancreas to decrease the eventual uh, spikes of glucose mm -hmm. and three it also targets your liver and so those are the main areas the stomach the liver the pancreas and then also those food cravings in the brain we talked about okay so would you say it speeds up your metabolism or does it slow it down actually? I well it slows down the stomach uh -huh. uh, there are two ways to look at metabolism you know either rushing food through your system or just burning up energy okay mm. so it's slowing down the transit of the food through your intestine and then it's also slowing you down your metabolism because what it does is it's decreasing the sugar spikes but because you're eating so little yep that's exactly. why exactly. people might mistaken that for oh my metabolism's faster but really it's just you're eating less you're eating less uh -huh. exactly and that minimizes those sugar spikes because when you eat you know, you have nothing in your system and then you eat and the sugar spikes go up. So you're avoiding that whole scenario where the glucose goes off the wall. Got it. Next <clears> question <throat> from the audience. Is Wilgovi and Ozempic the same drug? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Pretty much the same class of drugs, just different names. Okay, can you explain the difference between Ozempic and Manjaro? Yeah, so basically, again, they're the same family. They're like the Smith family, mm -hmm. and they pretty much work the same. Uh, the Ozempic is pretty much targeted for patients with diabetes. The Manjaro, not so much, and the Manjaro, sometimes you can get uh, dispensed even if you don't have diabetes. Do you think there's a more effective weight loss drug? Than Ozempic? Uh, out of the three that we just mentioned. Yeah, I like Ozempic the best. Um, it sort of hits all the areas really well. Again, they're the same family, mm -hmm. so they all work pretty much the same. And in some patients, we've dispensed Ozempic, and again, 95% of the patients it works, but you'll get that subset, 5% of patients who, for some reason, the Ozempic doesn't work. So then we go with Manjaro, and then that works. Mm -hmm. So you've got to find the right uh, key to the right lock. But by and large, Ozempic works for most, pe most people. You know, I get the occasional patient, oh, Ozempic didn't work for me. Or like, we explore it a little bit further. Well, number one, how long did you take it for? I took it for a week, it didn't work at all. Well, it's not gonna work for a week. You gotta give it at least three months. Mm -hmm. Okay, give it three months. If it doesn't work from there, then we reassess. Then we reassess, one, are you on the right dose? Do we need to increase it? Okay, so sometimes we need to increase the dose to get effective. Sometimes, even by increasing the dose, we try then three months more, and if we're still not getting the right effect, we may even change the uh, uh, within the family of drugs to maybe Manjaro. Got it. And how do these drugs interact with other medications? Depends. Uh, there are some other medications which you cannot take. We have a list on our website. Um, but for the most part, most of these medications can be taken with your other medications. 
Okay. Is there a risk of dependency or abuse with any of these new weight loss drugs? Well, the, we even with aspirin, there is an obu abuse potential. Uh -huh. So anybody can abuse anything just depending on what they want to do. So I guess there is a potential for abuse. But addiction, not so much. Usually it's the patient really loves the results and they want to continue on that. Mm -hmm. So there are, in my practice, a couple of types of patients. One, a patient, oh, you know... I don't eat anything, I exercise all the time, and I just can't lose those 20 pounds. Put you on Ozempic, three months, six months, nine months, a year, you hit that goal, then we get you off Ozempic, your thermostat's reset, you don't need Ozempic anymore, you're off and running, you're good to go, mm -hmm. all right? There are those class of patients who are like, Dr. Katzen, I don't want bariatric surgery, I need to lose 100, 150, 200 pounds, I need some help. Put you on Ozempic, and those patients may need more than a year or more on Ozempic to get you where you need to be. Mm -hmm. And then there's a class of patients who are like, Dr. Katz and I've had bariatric surgery. I don't need anything. I exercise 30 hours a day. You know, one of those pictures, I need help. So we do Ozempic and those patients, like other patients, may need to continue that Ozempic for their lifetime. Yeah. Got it. And how much weight can you generally expect to lose while on these weight loss drugs? Depends on the patient, duh, uh -huh. depends on their situation. But on average, usually you're going to lose about between two and four pounds a week. A week. So that's pretty cool. Wow, that's, yeah. that's fast. So one of the benefits too, again, everybody, whether you're on Ozempic or not on uh, any other weight loss medications or any medications in general, you should always exercise every day. You should always eat right high protein, low sugar diet, low carb diet, things like that. You should always do that as a baseline. But with these medications like Ozempic, you can be a little bit, let's say, more liberal on mm -hmm. your diet and more liberal on your exercise. You don't necessarily need to do those, though you should, uh, to get the ideal uh, body composition and health uh, benefits. But uh, a lot of patients don't continue their diet, don't exercise, and they'll still lose weight on Ozempic. Wow. Yep. And does everyone plateau at some point on these medications? Not necessarily. It really uh, depends on the patient, uh, the situation, but uh, most patients just continue to lose weight. Now, of course, we need to make sure the patient doesn't bottom out and lose too much weight. Okay, we don't mm -hmm. want you malnourished. That's not good. So we uh, keep a close tab on our patients. Do you run labs before prescribing this medication? Depends on the patient. So, you know, if there are, if they have a history of like high cholesterol or thyroid problems or liver problems, maybe they drink alcohol or a history of uh, alcohol problems in their family or thyroid problems, we'll run some labs. Um, so typically those would be thyroid labs, liver labs, routine labs, uh, cholesterol labs. Do these weight loss medications also help with high blood pressure? Uh, in, in a way, yes, secondarily. By decreasing your weight, you can control your hypertension, your high blood pressure. So again, it's not a direct effect, but it's a secondary effect because we're getting rid of a lot of excess weight. Got it. Okay, and someone who had VSG surgery, she's asking how much protein she should have a day while she's on Ozempic. Yeah, so if you had uh, VSG surgery uh, and you're asking how much protein should you have, really depends on the patient and how much metabolism, how much exercise you're doing, how many calories you're burning a day. But I would say on average, probably target maybe about 50 to 70 grams of protein a day. It's just a guess, probably best to give us a call and we can see exactly uh, how much you're exercising, uh, your current height and weight, your current BMI to determine your exact protein loads. Got it. Um, someone just commented saying that their husband is on Ozempic and they can yeah. no longer go out to eat. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate in a way. But again, health is most important. Uh, maybe you're saving money now. Yeah, uh, and by splitting not going out. the meal. That sounds yeah. nice. And maybe you're, maybe you're, yeah, splitting the meal. Maybe you're at home now talking more with your husband. I don't know. <laughs> maybe that's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. All right. Do you need to be overweight to qualify for these medications? To qualify, yeah. I mean... If you are a normal weight, why would you want to be on a weight loss medication? Mm -hmm. Or if you're underweight, why would you want to be on a weight loss medication? So yeah, these uh, drugs are designed for patients who are overweight. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how much overweight would you say? Based on height and weight, you can go on any Google app, any um, uh, BMI, mm -hmm. and calculate if you're overweight or not based on your height and your weight. So as Most as Americans are overweight. Category. Yeah, uh, over 50% of Americans are overweight. So think about that. Over 50% of Americans qualify for Ozempic. 50%. Wow. Think in America, if everybody got on Ozempic, think what that would do to the food industry. Collapse. McDonald's would go bye-bye. 
<laughs> yeah, probably. Probably. So just, uh, you know, if you're overweight uh, think, and if you're exercising and uh, eating right and you just can't get rid of the weight, think about these medications. Okay. Um, a common question is if I stop <clears throat> Ozempic, will I gain the weight back? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. So um, hopefully not. You know, hopefully by being on Ozempic for at least three months, mm -hmm. you're going to learn to eat right, better food control, better craving control. And with those uh, mechanisms, tools in place, hopefully you'll maintain that when you take, when you get off the Ozempic. So usually you do not gain that weight back after you stop Ozempic. And how do these drugs impact weight loss in comparison to bariatric surgery? Yeah, they're different. Okay, with bariatric surgery, and there are a couple of different types of bariatric surgery. So typically with those bariatric surgeries, you lose the weight in about eight to 10 months. All right, your diet changes, uh, you require less caloric intake, you're gonna exercise too. With the Ozempic, it's maybe a little bit slower. With the Ozempic, maybe you're losing two to four pounds a week and your GI system is slowed down, so you don't eat as much. So it works differently. Okay, someone's asking why the media is treating Ozempic like it's such a bad, scary thing. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I look at it differently. Um, people complain about, oh, the Ozempic face, mm -hmm. or there's an Ozempic butt now, yeah. <laughs> and Ozempic thighs. Well, would you rather have an Ozempic face or have diabetes out of control and hypertension out of control, be morbidly obese and not being able to exercise. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd rather have the Ozempic face. Right, and for those that don't know, Ozempic face um, usually refers to like more lines and wrinkles on your face, loose and sagging skin, and it's due to fat loss. Exactly. Uh -huh. So with weight loss, you lose fat. Okay, so with fat loss, you lose fat in the face. Cheekbones have a lot of fat in them. And so if you lose that volume of the face, of course, you're gonna lose volume of the face. Mm -hmm. With any diet plan, whether you diet or exercise, you will lose volume of the face, okay? So if you're on a, I don't know, there was a um, cookie dough diet way back, and people Ooh, would, good. yeah, but what you do is you don't eat all the right food, you eat just cookie dough, oh. and because of the calorie decrease, you decrease your caloric intake. Terrible diet, you do lose weight, but with that cookie dough diet, you lose volume of the face. So the press wasn't coming down on that because, you know, they thought, oh, that's an okay diet. Oh, so that's interesting. Don't believe the press all the time. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, um, but like you said, like losing weight in general will lead to that. It's not particularly because of Ozempic yeah. or a weight loss. It's drug. not Ozempic, it's weight loss. Uh -huh. So all forms of weight loss can give you weight loss face. Mm -hmm. It's not Ozempic face, it's weight loss face. Right, yeah. and we have so many <clears throat> patients that have lost a lot of weight and yeah. sometimes you're doing fat transfers to 20 year olds because they've lost so much weight Correct. into their faces. Correct. Or facelifts mm -hmm. uh, in 20 year olds because they've lost 200, 250, 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. But they're healthier. Yeah, and they're, they're healthier. Happier. And exactly. they look good in the end. Yeah. Um, how often do you have to take Ozempic? Is it by pill? Is it yeah. by shot? Ozempic is a shot right now and you take a shot once a week. Mm -hmm. uh, you typically inject the stomach but you can inject anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Teeny tiny needle uh, you won't pass out, okay? But People it's say it doesn't hurt very much. It doesn't hurt at all. It's the smallest needle we have. Tiny little injection, but they are coming out with the pill, so <sighs> that is interesting. So for people that are needle phobic, scared of needles. The pill's coming up. Yay! I'm scared of needle. <laughs> and I'm overweight, so that's the perfect combination. Right. <laughs> okay, someone's asking if Ozempic is like fentramine? Yeah, no. Uh, Ozempic slows down your GI system. It slows down food going through your stomach, as well as a couple of other things. Stimulates the pancreas, uh, decreases the liver, and, and targets the brain in terms of cravings. Fentermine is like you had about 20 espresso shots. What is fentermine? Is it like caffeine? It's a stimulant. Oh, okay. okay. And it revs up your metabolism. So uh, it does sort of the opposite. So it increases GI motility, it gets you really hyper, uh, reduces your heart rate, and basically you burn calories. So mm -hmm. it's a different way of attacking the problem. Still a good drug, it's just a different way of approaching the same uh, uh, problem diagnosis obesity got it if people are on ozempic or a weight loss drug do you recommend combining any other diets with it for example keto yeah i think that's the optimal um so ketogenic diet high protein low carbs minimal sugar uh and you combine that with intermittent fasting mm -hmm. and ozempic 
I guarantee you'll lose weight. Guarantee. Mm -hmm. Now, some people out there are worried about losing weight too fast because it'll lead to extra skin laxity. Yeah, uh, there have been no conclusive medical studies which show, okay, if you lose all the weight really quickly, the skin's not going to bounce back. Or if you lose the weight slowly, the skin's going to bounce back better. So there are no conclusive studies about that. It really depends more on your genetics um, and skin quality. Mm -hmm. You know, Are you losing all this weight in your 60s? Or are you losing all this weight in your 20s? Skin quality completely varies. It's not necessarily how quickly you lose the weight. Right. And that also means so the sooner the better because we're only getting older. Our exactly. Only. And then also the sooner you get rid of that excess weight, the rest of your uh, body is going to reset. So hopefully your high blood pressure will get better, your diabetes will get better, uh, some other uh, medical conditions can also get better, and you can exercise easier too. Mm -hmm. Someone's asking what the cost of these medications are and if they're covered by insurance. Yeah, sometimes they're covered by insurance. It's getting tough to get it covered by insurance because you need to meet criteria. Uh, you need to be uh, obese, you need a medical condition, sometimes diabetes or hypertension, and you need those categories. And the problem is too, sometimes these medications are pretty expensive. So the insurance companies unfortunately don't want to cover them. Mm. So getting insurance coverage for these is difficult. Sometimes we can get it, uh, but then the problem becomes your pharmacy may not have it. So with us, we try to get insurance coverage, but a lot of the time we cannot get insurance coverage. So you may have to pay a lot of money to get it uh, at your local pharmacy, but we have deals with local pharmacies where we can dispense straight from the pharmacy. And can you tell us about what you offer? Yeah, so basically we offer consultations, uh, virtual consultations or physical comp consultations where you come to the office and we discuss how much weight you want to lose, uh, what you're eating, uh, how you're exercising, if you have any of the medical conditions, and we target a Ozempic uh, dose for you and we can get it direct from the pharmacy and we don't uh, if you qualify for insurance Yep, great. We get insurance to qualify But usually you don't qualify for the insurance if you have medical conditions. We're going to order some blood tests, you know thyroid uh, liver uh, Basic panel cholesterol panel if indicated mm -hmm. and then prescribe the medications and then we follow you Pretty much every three months. We'll reassess your condition if you're losing the weight if you need a higher dose uh, And if we need to repeat any labs Got it. And so you said you offer virtual or in-person consultations, so this could be from anywhere around the world. Correct, correct. Um, in the U.S. In the U.S. We, sorry, we offer the consultations worldwide, uh -huh. but to dispense the medication, I can only prescribe and dispense in the U.S. Got it. Uh, if a patient from, say, England or Dubai calls me, I cannot send medication across state, across country lines. Okay. Yeah. All right. What do you think the future of weight loss medication looks like? Yeah, I think we're pretty close to it. You know, we have uh, injections now. They'll go to the pill form. Uh, ideally, we do the pill form less frequently. Maybe you take a pill once a month mm -hmm. or maybe you take a pill every six months or a year to get that weight loss down. So I think we're pretty close. Mm -hmm. And can you tell <clears throat> us at all about your pricing? Uh, depends on the uh, patient, but uh, usually uh, the pricing depends on which drug we're going to use. Okay. All right. So they could call the office or GM us for more info. Yeah. yeah. But it's much less than what you would pay at the pharmacy. And, uh, you know, if your insurance covers it, great. You have a deductible and the copay and everything like that. But this is much less expensive than the uh, what the pharmacists are going to charge you. And on top of that, you can actually get it. <laughs> correct. Correct. Uh -huh. So a lot of pharmacies don't have it. They don't carry it. Uh, so, you know, even if you get your insurance to cover it, the pharmacist may not have it just mm -hmm. because of supply chain uh, problems. Someone's asking, what are the long-term effects of Ozempic? Losing weight. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so you'll lose weight. And the uh, repercussions of that can be a couple of things. You know, you, with the loss of fat, uh, the skin may not bounce back. So you may need cosmetic procedures, plastic surgery procedures, tummy tuck, arm lift, facelift, things like that. But again, it's about your health. Mm -hmm. So lose the weight first, and then after you've lost the weight, then reassess to see if you need anything, if anything. Okay, and can I get surgery while being on Ozempic? No. Again, one of the problems with Ozempic is it slows down your stomach, right? Uh -huh. So food is sitting in your stomach. So if we give you an anesthetic to put you to sleep for plastic surgery or a procedure of surgery in general, you could vomit during the induction when we put the tube down your throat for the surgery. And if you vomit, it could go in your lungs and you get a really nasty pneumonia or you could actually potentially choke, I guess. So we'll ask you to stop the Ozempic at least two to four weeks before the uh, surgery. 
Okay. And can you tell us a couple of patient success stories about Ozempic or Monjoro? Yeah. yeah so uh, with the Ozempic, we've had a patient who lost about 120 pounds. Oh my gosh. 120 pounds. That's, so that, wow. Yeah, and that was over. That was over about two years. Okay. Okay. So that was you know extended again. The Ozempic takes a little bit longer than the bariatric surgeries, uh, but that patient uh, is going to continue the Ozempic. Uh, she is eating right. Uh, she is exercising right. She has some loose skin now because of that significant weight loss, mm -hmm. but she'd much rather have loose skin than that 120 pounds. So she avoided bariatric surgery, uh, and now she is able to exercise as much as she wants and eat better proportions uh -huh. and eat better food. And let's say like that patient, for example, lost like, how much did you say? 120. 120. Um, if they're not plateauing and they want to continue to lose weight, but they want skin removal surgery, how do you handle that? Because you usually say wait three months, right? Yeah, so yeah, so you'll, if you want skin removal surgery, you're going to go off Ozempic for about a month, mm -hmm. uh, see where you plateau. If you continue to lose weight after you discontinue the Ozempic, continue to lose the weight. And then once you've been off Ozempic for about three months, then we, we see where you've plateaued and then see what procedures you need. Right. And you, you <clears throat> make the, the tummy tucks like last. So even if they were to lose more weight, they probably wouldn't yeah, need another one. That's a good question. Uh -huh. So say you're on the Ozempic, you lose the weight you want to lose. You're at a plateau and you're like, uh, I need a tummy tuck. We get you off the Ozempic for about three months. We do the tummy tuck. Then we reassess. Do you need to even go back on the Ozempic? So most patients do not need to go back on once they've plateaued and reached their, where they want to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, Ozempic is a great drug, FDA approved. You will lose weight two to four pounds a week. Um, we try to get insurance coverage, but it's difficult to get insurance coverage. And then the second problem is not all pharmacies have it. But before the huge demand, and we saw it coming in this office of the Ozempic, we have a deal with uh, several pharmacies where we can get the uh, medications for you. So we have access to it. We can dispense it if you're a good candidate for it. Someone's asking what the youngest age you can be to be on Ozempic is. Yeah, I would say 21. Um, you know, a lot of things are changing and happening and growing before 21. So uh, I think 21 is a safe number. Mm -hmm. And <clears> since <throat> we're catching some people in the tail end, let's just talk about who's a good candidate for these weight loss drugs. Yeah, patients who are healthy, uh, who don't smoke, who have tried dieting, who have tried exercising, who have tried ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting, things like that. And perhaps it doesn't work and they need more. They need mm -hmm. to lose weight. And if you're overweight, of course, you mm -hmm. know, we do these medications to help you lose weight. So if you have a normal weight, doesn't make sense to go on them, but if you're overweight or morbidly obese, these are really good uh, medications. Okay, great. And let's just leave everyone your contact info. Yeah. For, so, first of all, you guys could follow us and you could DM us if you want to, but yeah. if not, then they could call you. Correct. So 310-859-7770, or you can email us at? At scheduling at timothykatzenmd.com but it's probably easiest to just dm us and then we could pass you that information yeah over. just dm us tell us you're interested we can get you set up with a consultation even today uh t tuesdays are my consult days mm -hmm. clinic days so we can get you in even today or you know throughout the week uh anna at my office will get you scheduled in so if you're thinking about weight loss if you're thinking about oh this what's this ozempic stuff give us a call we can explain what's going on all right. Well, thank you, Dr. Katzen, for thank joining you. us for Plastic Surgery 90210. Thank Thanks you, for Plastic Surgery, yep. for joining us today. And happy Taco Tuesday, everyone. Happy Taco Tuesday. Thanks. Bye. Bye.